sit for a moment. Um, hallelujah. Now, I want us to I want us to learn a new song. So I'm going to teach you the song. All right? Do you want to learn a new song? Are you sure you want to learn a new song? Okay. Come, where is she, Ida? We sing a new song. Um, this song is called what? Best Praise. Best Praise. All right? So, sing it for us. And um, best praise. Do you want to give your best praise to him? I want to give your best praise to Jack Toronto. Do you know Jack Toronto? We give our best praise to, to thee. thee. We pour. The oil, pour out the oil, love and adoration. A love and we give adoration. Our best praise to thee. Can you see the words? We give our best, best praise, praise to thee. We give our, our best, best praise to thee. We pour out. We pour, pour out the oil of our love, love and adoration. We give our best praise to thee. Hosanna, wave your hands and sing, sing praises to the king, sing Hosanna, Hosanna, lift your voices high, every nation, every tribe, we give our best praise to thee, we give our best praise to thee, we pour out the oil of our love and adoration we give our best praise to thee we welcome you jesus we welcome you jesus bless you in the name of the lord we honor you jesus Welcome you, Jesus. Welcome you, Jesus. I think you're supposed to dance at this part. Give our best praise to thee. a little bored when I was, when you were that's why I came to give you this song so if you provoke me I'll teach you another one alright so we give our best praise to thee we pour out the oil of our love and adoration we give our best praise to thee I mean it's, it's a rap you can use if you have a beloved uh, I'm pouring out the oil of my love and the oil of my adoration. Hey! So, we pour out the oil of our love and the oil of our adoration to thee. 
and we give our best praise. Because you see, sometimes we praise other things oh, and other people more than God. So, we are going to sing our best song. Sometimes when I write a song, I don't know whether I should write it to a beloved or to God. But from this song, I'm learning I have to write the best song to him. And then the second best song too. A song like Take My Life. It is to him. So the best songs are to him. And then second best songs like I Really Like You and so on. It's like to the beloved. I'll be calling you. Yeah. So let's do it again. Are you ready? Are you ready? Did you catch the song? Did you get it? Okay. Let's do it. Ready, go. Volume on the keyboards. All right. We give our best praise to thee. We give our best praise to thee. We pour out the oil. you sing better now. I'll let them continue their praise and worship. Wow. Okay, sit down, sit down, sit down. Do you remember the song I just taught you? Where is she come? Why don't we try that song? I 
mean, you can stand up if you want to. You can sit down if you want to. We give our best praise to thee. You are getting that part. Sing, sing it. Eh. Oh, 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 give our best praise to thee. So it's three O's. Yes. Three O's. Yes. Okay, it's three O's. Ready, go. One more time. Oh, 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 give, give our best, best praise to thee. Beautiful. Let's do it again. All right. Are you enjoying choir practice? Sometimes you have to have choir practice. Okay. We give our best praise. We give our best praise to Thee. We pour out the oil of our love and adoration. We give our best praise to Thee. Oh, 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 o
children, we give our best grace to Thee. We give our best songs to Thee. Are you going to give Him your best songs? We give our best songs to Thee. We pour it out. We pour out the oil of our love and adoration. We give our best praise. to teach you another song. Would you like to learn another song? Yeah. This song is about a good shepherd. You are my good, good shepherd. All right? Let's go. Listen, he will guide and carry me. Are these the right words? Yes. Are you glad that he will guide and carry you? How many want him to carry you? When he carries you, you don't get your feet dirty, all right? And then the next one says, protect and never leave. How many want your shepherd to shoo off the flies and the wolves and the foxes? Who see you as lunch. They see some of you as a sandwich. Because you are so small in relation to them. They see you as a sandwich. 
And then, over mountains high and low, I hear him call me his own. Wow. Wouldn't you like a nice person like Jesus to call you his own? Huh? Beautiful. Let's take it again. Ready, go. I was going to say you may be seated, but you're already seated. Now, time to give our offering. Amen. And all those who are joining us online and on television, you're welcome. Jesus is a good, good shepherd, ever leading me. You are always being led by the Holy Spirit. So many things you are doing, you are being led by the Holy Spirit and you will know that you are being led by the Holy Spirit often later on. All right? Give me power up, please. Hallelujah. Now, today, um, I want us to really 
believe in the power of breaking curses through our gifts and offerings. Amen. Malachi chapter 3, verse 8. Will a man rob God? Yet you have robbed me. But you say, how have we robbed thee? And the answer is, in tithes and offerings. You are cursed with a curse. That sounds strong. Just an offering that we didn't give. Who? Hmm? For tithes and offering. How does that bring a curse? Why are you mentioning the word curse? For you have robbed me even this whole nation. Now, if you have a child who does not, you know, you do good things for the child. Actually, most of the good things that you do for a child, you, you, you sort of don't even realize the child doesn't know what is done for, for you. You don't really know till you grow up. And you realize, wow, somebody used to take me to school. Huh. Drop me and pick me. And it was a whole issue. Who is picking them today? How would they come home? How would they be taken to school and come back? Every day from class Minus three, is it kindergarten? Or till you grow up. Wow. And if their children are more than one, then after this one finishes, this one is still on it. On it. It's a project. Huh. But you see, you never know all these things have been done. You assume that you go to school. I, I remember one family, one sister told me that they used to pick them from school with a tipper track. Yes. Because I don't know why, whether it was, I don't know, but they picked them from school with a tipper track. That was the car that was available. So, when then show gratitude towards the parent. Do you see? You can sort of see that this is a funny child. It's going to be a cursed child. Because the child tell you or know how to say thank you. Derek Prince said that you, when you are taught in the British culture, you, you start gives you something. You say thank you before you take it. So when he says, oh, thank you very much. Before you've even brought it to your, to your. Thank you very much. Don't you say thank you when your hand is stretched out like this. It doesn't even come to you. You start saying thank you. That's good training. So tithes. Thank you. To God. Like to the invisible God. Who does more than your parents do. So that is why the word curse is coming up when it comes to money and tithes and all. It's like there's no acknowledgement of God when it comes to you um, what God has done for you. It's like, oh, I will breathe. Oh, I will travel. You know, but God is the one who allows you to live. We've seen so many strange things. We never knew that there were so many things that we take for granted. I said, okay, I'll show you that. Stretching out your hand to shake someone. 
videos, old videos, and you see us touching people, holding, hugging, shaking hands, laying hands on people. It looks so strange. <laughs> because now all those things have been banned. You, you meet someone, say, oh, hello, it's a long time. And you say, oh, it's a long time. Yes, it's a long time. You'll be standing there like uh, somebody's about to take a gun. And your beautiful face is covered with this mask. How will somebody even know that you are nice to choose you as a beloved? All the things you've done on your face are covered with a mask. What is the use of all that? So as you are not saying thank you to God, it's a kind of a curse. Are you with me? And... That is why he said, look, I'm going to help you to break the curse. Because all this talk about curses must mean that there is something we can do to help this curse thing. And a curse is a malediction and a kind of frustration, do you see, which overtakes you and uh, you... You, you are changed forever. So in Deuteronomy chapter 28, he gives a little more detail on what curses are like. And he says, and I want to read a particular one in verse 20, which sort of defines a curse. The Lord shall send upon thee cursing and vexation. What is vexation, confusion, rebuke in all that thou settest thy hand to do? So like there's a curse in everything that you are involved in. Nothing works. Nothing works. I remember one time I was listening to Derek Prince talking and he was talking about a relative of his who was dying. And before the man died, and he was on a sick bed dying, a man appeared at the foot of the bed. I don't know whether it was he, Derek Prince, who saw it, or the man. And the man was sort of shabbily dressed, and he stood there, you know, and it was like that man has followed the man throughout his life, and the man was like a something about poverty and difficulty. And it was like he appeared to, for you to know who was there. And he said, this is somebody who should have done well. But as he lay dying, he had been in difficulty all his life. Whatever is following you to give you cursing and vexation and rebuke in all that you set your hand to do is rebuke from your life today in the name of Jesus. Amen. Now, verse 23 says something. It says, thy heaven over, that is over thy head shall be brass and the earth that is under thee shall be iron. Now, what does it mean if the heaven is brass? It means everything in your life is hard because the heaven is hard. And then the earth is hard, iron. So working is hard, living is hard. The heaven over thee shall be brass, and the earth under thee shall be iron. Are you listening to me? So, one of the things that the curse removes is it removes the hardness of life. Amen. You know, what is the use of getting finally by the end of your life the gold and the silver, but it has been so hard and it has cost so much 
and it has been so difficult. So the heaven over thee shall be brass and the earth shall be iron. Father, I thank you that every iron ground is softening today by the power of God in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Is there somebody here who has lived in England before? Those watching in England, you, have, you, are, in, you are in England. But is there somebody here who has lived in England before? Aha. Uh-huh. You'll be surprised that upon arriving there, you realize that for you, the earth is iron. It's not easy. You know, one day somebody told me that if you want to be poor, don't be poor in England. I didn't understand what he was saying. He said, if you are hungry and you go from house to house, nobody will offer you food. The best is that, would you like some tea? That's all. Do you know that in England, when, you, when your friends say, oh, we are going out for lunch, you, on your birthday, <laughs> and you call, the, you call the people to come, and we are all meeting at wherever for your birthday. 14 people. You should make sure that you have money on you. Because even though you've been invited, when you finish and the waiter brings the bell, 14 different bells, everybody pay for yourself and go home. Yeah. Hey. No, it's a party for, to celebrate. But after, everybody pay for yourself. Huh? Hmm. So those of you in England, please, next time, pay, please, next time, pay somebody's bill. Especially the birthday boy. It's hard. Yes. One sister went to Mexico. I told you that story last time. What, should I tell you again? Yeah. She was going to America. So I think there is a way to America through Mexico. You go around. I don't know how they go. And then when you get to Mexico, then you try to cross. So, when she got to Mexico, how to enter America, I think there was delay. So, as she was walking in town, she didn't issue as a newcomer. They were shouting what? Quando? Quanto? Quanto? So, she thought they were shouting, oh, you are beautiful. Or, hello. Or, welcome. Quanto? Quanto? So she was also waving. <laughs> Not knowing that they were asking her how much it is to sleep with her. Because they thought she was a prostitute. That's the only use they saw for her. Yesterday I saw a boy, two years old, was taken over the wall to enter America. America. And they drop him from 30 feet. He's two years old. And they drop him from 30, I think the wall is 30 feet high. And they drop him like a, a, a ball. And then he was caught by the father. From Ghana, a Ghanaian. Yes. He's a goalkeeper. He, he caught the child. To cross the border. Yes. Yes. Two years. It's not easy. The heaven is brass and the ground is iron. Every hard thing shall ease up for you from today in the name of Jesus. Amen. And then the Bible says, the Lord shall make the rain of thy land powder and dust. 
and it shall come down from heaven until thou be destroyed. Now, everybody expects but this time, when the, so rain means what is supposed to happen naturally at each phase. But only that in your case, when it comes, it is a variation. A beloved you can't marry. A car you cannot drive. A current. Yes. Me money. When I look, it was ten billion dollars. Ten billion Zimbabwe dollars. Yes, ten billion. Huh? It's still a dollar. Mm-hmm. I think I had 10 trillion and 10 billion and then 10 or 100 million dollars. So one day I was on a plane. I always kept it because it made me feel rich. So I always kept it in my pocket. So one day I was on a plane and then I I bought something. I think $20 or something. So I just took the 10 million and I gave it to the lady. She looked at it. I said, you are rich. I told her, you are rich. Ten million. I said, what? Well. She said, I cannot use this one. <laughs> what is the use of rain that is in the form of powder? And in the form of dust. A car you cannot drive. A brother you cannot marry very nice brother but due to certain things it cannot work out that is it as for the rain is coming but it's powder and it's dust so whatever you are to receive in due season may you receive it and may it not have been destroyed and turned into powder and dust in the name of Jesus Christ Father, I thank you that today the seed we are sowing, the offerings we are giving are going to open doors and end the curse, the curses that are in this world, that are working from our families, from our lives, from our homes, from our backgrounds, whatever is following us in the name of Jesus, that is not from you. We thank you that we disconnect from it. And as we plant our seed, our tithes, our offerings, our everything, our little and our much, we thank you that the curse is broken and your blessing has come. Now let the ground under us be soft and the heaven above be soft. Let the rain that comes upon us be real rain of your waters your rivers of living water. We give you thanks in Jesus' name. Amen. Today, I want you to take your offering, 1,000, 1 million, 20 pounds, 20 dollars, euros, Swiss francs, every offering you want to give to the Lord, give it. And also, let's give our tithes in this offering and also give your special offering, second Third, everything. You know how it is sometimes. We may not, I don't think it's going to rain today. It doesn't, it says there's no rain today on the internet. So, but it's getting cooler. So, let's do everything we have to do one touch. And uh, God is going to bless your finances and your future. And I know the rain, you'll be singing, the rain is coming. The rain, and it will be good rain. It will be good things that are falling on you in due season. Hallelujah. Do you believe due, in due season something good is going to come? Oh, yes. You know, I've written many books. 
And uh, sometimes I see people benefiting from the books and being blessed. One day I was somewhere and somebody was so appreciative of a book that I had written. And it was the first time that someone had shown such appreciation. He told me that, you know, I only want you to talk about this book. It's not a usual book that I talk about. He said, it's such a blessing to me. And I realized that in due season, the rain that is supposed to come on you for all the good seeds that have been planted, God will let it come in due season if you are not weary. Amen. May you experience good harvests, good rainfalls of every seed you have ever sown. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Amen. Let us welcome the Greater Love Gospel Choir to give us a song as we prepare our hearts for the word of God and God's direction for our lives this afternoon. What a blessing. Don't forget, flow prayer meeting how many were part of the flow prayer meeting? Or you were asleep, eh? You see, I told you that the flow will come without announcement and you didn't believe it. Some of you were snoring when the flow started. You couldn't even be called. When they called you in the night, you couldn't wake up. But you must be alert for flow at every time. Amen. Let us walk hands and declare the faith over every part of your life that everything is possible. It's possible, my brother. It's possible, my sister. Give the Lord a shout of praise and welcome our pastor, Bishop Dag Hewitt Mills. Come on, give God praise. Father, thank you that nothing is impossible when we put our trust in you. In Jesus' name we pray. And now, Lord, open our eyes and Lord, take us into transformation. In Jesus' name we pray. And everyone shouted, Amen. Amen. You may be seated in heavenly places and on earth here in the Jesus Savior of the World Square. Are you excited to be in church today? Right. Now, uh, first I want to congratulate the Greater Love Club because yesterday they held a powerful outreach. Some of you younger ones, you don't know that the Greater Love Club were Christians before you knew Christ and before you were born. So that's why they are called Greater Love. So they had a powerful breakfast meeting yesterday. And it was awesome. Amen. So we thank the Lord. But I know you had a lot of other constituency services and all sorts of things were going on. Congratulations on your powerful services you had yesterday morning. I think it was happening at the same time. Yeah, so you see, you have to move around to know what's going on. I didn't know what was going on. I found out. I said, wow. That's a blessing. So we thank the Lord. And uh, today is nice and sunny. Please use the opportunity to buy your own personal umbrella. Like some have never owned one before. And then use the opportunity to buy sunglasses that you will use for your holiday. And maybe even for your honeymoon. Okay? And then use the opportunity. Or you want us to make canopies, like use canopies over here. We can have canopies. Or maybe we should just make canopies for the greater love people. No, you don't want a canopy? You get your own umbrellas? Oh, you are okay. Oh, wow. They want a suntan. That's beautiful. Now, today is the last message on going deeper and doing more. (laughs) So, the last one is 
how to go deeper in wisdom and knowledge. Amen. And that's a very short one. But I believe that you're going to be going deeper in knowledge. Now, what is the difference between knowing something deeply and just knowing scratches on the surface? Now, if the nurses will be honest, they will confess to you that all the things that the doctors study, they also study the same things, the same subjects. I was actually quite surprised when I was in medical school. I used to ask the nurses, what are you, what are you doing in school? What are you learning? I thought initially they were just studying things like how to use cotton wool and uh, how to put gentian violet and how to what do they do? Bandage, put bandages. You know, but, but you see, the reason why I started asking them was that at a point I realized that like this nursing student has been in school almost as long as me. You know, they were there for a long time, three years. I don't know if some were even four years. You know, they were always in school. So one day I asked, what, what are you learning? And then she, she told me anatomy. I said, hey, but that's what we also do. Then physiology, biochemistry, internal medicine, surgery. I mean, the subjects that medical students study, that's what nurses learn. Now, the difference is between the doctor and the nurse is that the doctor has gone deeper in the same anatomy and the same internal medicine. So even though it's all surgery, you, you, the, the, the doctor has gone deeper. Then a surgeon, oh, that was also another thing. You know, when we were in, uh, uh, in anatomy, that was the first year, I didn't, know, I didn't know what it was. We were dissecting some dead bodies. The one day we came and then there were these grown-ups, you know, who were also dissecting a body on the side. But they were, they were there alone with this dead body. And I said, who are these people? Also, they are all doctors. I said, what are they doing? They, do? they, are, they are doing uh, anatomy, masters in anatomy or PhD or something. I said, wow. We were just f- fresh, first year students. But some people have done it. So I said, I don't, I don't they know anatomy? They know it. They are going deeper. So they were back to dissecting. You know, anatomy means where everything is in the body. So when you study anatomy, you know everything. Because if a doctor presses you here, he must know what is there. He has to know what is exactly there. If he touches you here, he must know what is here. Do you see? So, uh, it's, it is, but there's, there, there are surgeons. Pastors, please come, you, there's space here. There are surgeons, all right, and they know more. How many would like a dentist to operate on your heart? Would you prefer the dentist to pull out your tooth than to operate on your heart? Now, dentists, there's space here. The the dentists are also doctors. They study many things that doctors study. That's what people don't realize. But The doctor goes deeper in certain things. Are you with me? So going deeper in wisdom and knowledge is key because wisdom and understanding and knowledge lead to riches and honor and long life. Amen. All right? So... You, God wants to give you wisdom. So now I'm going to give you how to go deeper in wisdom and knowledge. And I want you to listen very carefully because uh, I can read out all these points in five minutes. Okay, so sometimes when we go slowly, it's just to help you to um, sort of grasp, all right, what is being said. 
Okay. Now, if you've never been to university and you come to church regularly and you listen carefully, you'll be surprised that you'll catch up on many things that you didn't study in the university. How many university graduates have even realized that coming to church it seems to be knowing more things that are important in your life. Is it not true? Even though you did philosophy and linguistics. You see? And what? History. You know, one day I was telling my wife some things in the house about the French Revolution. And I was asking her, but you, did you not do history? (laughs) You know, and I realized that in serving the Lord, I was knowing more about the French Revolution than she who studied the French Revolution. I was asking her, what are the causes of the French Revolution? And she was trying to remember. And I told her because there was no bread. That is why there was the French Revolution. All right. So how to go deeper in wisdom. All right. Number one. Go deeper by studying Jesus Christ's life and history. Jesus' life is an amazing life. The Bible says in Colossians chapter 2, it says that their hearts may be comforted. Verse 2, being knit together in love unto all riches of the full assurance of understanding to the acknowledgement of the mystery of God and of the Father and of Christ, in whom, that is Christ, in whom are hid all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. In whom, in Jesus Christ, is hidden all treasures of wisdom and knowledge. And, and that is why looking at Jesus Christ, who he was and what he did is alone wisdom. I never have a day that I don't read about Jesus. In my, in my quiet times, I, I always add, it's either I'm in Matthew, because at first I used to have my quiet time from one book, but now I have my quiet time from four books. Yes, because I need to eat more hamburgers. All right, spiritual hot dogs. So, I always have one from Jesus. It's Matthew, Mark, Luke, John. When I'm reading, I don't want it to finish. And you know, one of the things that really gets to me is, I hear there are other books like Bartholomew and some of these other, and I really wish they had been added to the Bible because it would have given us just, you know, one more book. That's one of the things that edges me to write. It's quite difficult to write, but sometimes it edges me, you know, just do it. You'll be surprised, you know, that it's a blessing to somebody, you know. So, just looking at Jesus and who he was, you know, his life, that he went to the wedding, you know, that he, he, he was He liked his mother and that he did what his mother said he should do. Do you see? Not not his preaching. And that his mother told him about the problem. And that when he was on the cross, he wasn't teaching. He was saying, No, that's your mom. mom. Look after my mother for me, John. Yeah. You know. His attitude, it was not a teaching towards different people. It's a a teaching. His life, not having anywhere to lay his head. Having 12 disciples. And yet, out of the 12, he had three that were closer than the 12. 
and that he had 70 people that he could send. And that he had 120 that were in the upper room. And there were 500 whom he appeared to. That he had disciples from different places. That he was betrayed. How he behaved towards the different types of people that he encountered. The Bible says that Jesus is made, is in whom are hid all treasures of wisdom and knowledge. How he got what he needed was not a teaching. There was almost no words when he fed 5,000 people with five loaves and two fishes. There's no words in there. No words in red. He just said, how many loaves and fishes do we, how much food do we have? And then the man said, even if we bought 500 penny worth, we cannot feed all these people. His attitude towards Pharisees, hypocrites. His attitude towards everything that he did. How much he ate with people. Yes. You'd be surprised. In 1 Corinthians chapter 1 and verse 30. Verse 30 says, But of him are you in Christ, who of God is made, that is Christ, is made unto us wisdom. So Christ is made unto you wisdom. When you look at Christ, you will, be, you will get wisdom for your life. Just look at Jesus. Yes. Who is made unto us wisdom. So Christ is your wisdom. Christ is wisdom. He is made unto us righteousness, sanctification, and redemption. In 1 Corinthians chapter 1 verse 24, the Bible says, Unto them which are called both Jews and Greeks, Christ is the power of God and the wisdom of God. Like, just look at Christ and that is the wisdom of God. Yes. The cross that he embraced is wisdom. How he prayed in the garden of Gethsemane before he suffered on the cross for three hours on the same topic is your wisdom. In him I hid all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. Just look at him. Just look at Jesus for any deep wisdom that you need. Wisdom is what to do. Look at Jesus Christ and many things will be easy to understand for you and to know what to do. That he even knew that he was going to die. That he spent so much time training disciples. He knew what he could not do and sending people and appointing people. That he forgave all his disciples for forsaking him. Huh? All of them who forsook him. He, for, he forgave all of them. That he had dinner with Judas. It's, it's wisdom. Yes. That six weeks after you know, Pentecost is six weeks after um, Easter, I think. Is it not those of you who know all, a lot of things? I know people, I know there are some of you who know a lot of things. Is it not correct? Yes, 40 weeks, 40 days. 40 days he was sending people to the world after, look at the disaster at the cross. Everybody ran away. Peter said, doesn't know, he has not seen Jesus before. But six weeks later, he was on a mission. It shows you 
how much Jesus believed in recovery and restoration of things and of people. It's, it's powerful. So, uh, I, I don't know, but if you want to go deeper, you know, Jesus said something, I, I'm sure you've heard this, you, you've heard it before, right? Have you heard this before? Take my yoke and learn of me. Learn of me. Learn, learn of me means learn of me. <laughs> It's not even learn from me. Learn of me. Yes. About me. Around me. Of me. I'm the subject. Jesus is the subject. Yes. You know, when I preach at uh, crusades and I have a chance to preach Salvation, like yesterday, I preached about salvation. It's, it is, it is the, is not easier. The nicest to me topic of all is Jesus. Yes, I, I particularly enjoy. Somebody was asking me, "What do you like to preach about loyalty?" No, loyalty is more of warfare. Because <laughs> with loyalty, you are correcting natural tendencies. That are in all of us. Because if you don't teach about loyalty, you will dishonor your father. And you see, you grow up despising your father. How many despise your father before? Your father in the house, raise your hand. And those who are not raising their hand, you know, thou shalt not lie. It has also caught you. You look at your father and you say, ah, the man is old. He doesn't know Facebook. <laughs> old school. Colossians chapter 2 verse 3 says, In whom are hid all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. So number one for your life, for going deeper in wisdom and knowledge is study Jesus' Jesus. Study Jesus. Jesus. You see the big sign there? Jesus, Savior of the world. It's enough education. Those letters there. Jesus, Savior of the world. That's, I mean, it's, it's, it's simple. He's the Savior of the world. That's all. And it's true. Number two, study Jesus' wisdom and knowledge or Jesus' teachings. You see, what he taught. All right? Now, studying Jesus, all right, is his words and what he taught. In Acts chapter 1, the Bible says in verse 1, is the first verse in the book of Acts. Most people pass over the first verse in the book of Acts. But in verse 1, it says, The former treaties I have made, O Theophilus. You know, former treaties. I think treaties is like a letter or some kind of writing. Okay? O Theophilus, of all that Jesus began both to do and to teach. So, he was saying in my former letter, I was talking about what Jesus did. This was written by Luke, is it so? So, he wrote Luke, the one, the former one, was about what Jesus was doing. That is, look at Jesus and just learn of him. If he had this time, 12 disciples, have 12 disciples. I've always tried to have 12 disciples. I don't know why I have more than 12. It's probably something wrong. Do you see? I don't know. 
12 initial, then the 70, they become a lot quickly. Do you see? So, to, what he did, and then what he began to teach, Jesus' teachings are the most vital and most important teachings that can ever be taught. Look, if you ever have to cut out parts of your Bible and they say take one book, it will be between Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. I'm telling you, these four, you have to choose one of those four. If you have to cut out everything, then you are allowed one book. I don't know which one you choose. Which one would you choose? You choose John. Hmm. John is not bad. What about Luke? If you don't have Luke, you don't have uh, Lazarus. Uh, you don't have, uh, um, yeah, the, the prodigal son. You don't have uh, Lazarus and the rich man. You don't have um, on the way to Jericho, that story. The good Samaritan. You don't have, there are many things. Huh? Yeah, many, many, many things you don't have. So I don't know what you are going to do. You have to ask for two books. So maybe Luke and John. Or Matthew and John. But they are all different. It's amazing. Let Jesus' words be the greatest words to you. He that has. What shall happen to him? Eh? To him shall be given more. And he that has not, even that which he has, shall be taken away from him. Hey! It's a very deep statement. And I have a whole book written on that. Jesus said, be wise as serpents, harmless as that. If you can meditate on it, you will learn a lot. Jesus said, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and everything else will be added to you. People will even be jealous of you. Jealousy is the reason for a lot of things. So, believe the words of Jesus. Now, be able to preach the words of Jesus. Take up your cross and follow me. If anyone come unto me and hate not his father, his mother, his brothers, his sisters, his wife and his children, yea, and his own life also, he cannot be my disciple. Wow. These are the words of Jesus, our savior. He that believes in me will never die. I am the resurrection I am the life I am the good good shepherd he will lead and guide and carry me amazing so brothers and sisters if you abide in me and my words abide in you you shall ask what you will and it shall be done unto you (laughs) Greater love has no man than this. That a man should lay down. It's wisdom for your life. I don't know how, but it is great wisdom for you. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. You know, even in my small life, preaching about Jesus Christ has yielded the greatest uh, uh, I don't know what to say honor and grace just preaching about Jesus yes you know many of us pastors when we see dignitaries and people from all walks of life men of higher learning we feel that we must quote from Encyclopedia Britannica and from Plato. You feel you must make quotations from Nelson Mandela. 
what Nelson Mandela said or what Martin Luther King said. Mahatma Gandhi. You must make quotations from these great people. But you can just stay with Jesus Christ and you'll find out that you are holding the biggest wisdom that ever existed. Yes. Blessed are the merciful. Blessed are the poor in spirit. Blessed are the meek. Hmm. The words are so deep that you just have to stop and start thinking that what on earth does this mean? Yes. Blessed are the poor in spirit. I was hungry and you didn't visit me. It's great wisdom. You know, the first time I visited an orphanage, I was actually looking for a a baby. I'd never been to an orphanage. I was shocked to see children that have neither father nor mother. No one owns them. It was something to me. You know, when Jesus said, I was naked, I was hungry, I was thirsty. You didn't, I came to you, you, you didn't take me in. It was when I went to an orphanage that I understood that you you wouldn't take me. If we understood it, we would all be adopting children. It was when I went to a prison. See, a 29-year-old man will never have the wisdom to understand that prisoners must be loved. You see, because most of our natural thing is that they deserve to be there. They are dangerous people and they should stay there. But Jesus said, I was in prison. And he, and he was in his 20s. And, he, and you, how do you know all this? Because these are not the words of just a man. It's great wisdom. I was in prison. You didn't visit me. When were you in prison, Lord? When? I am telling you, de- bro- brothers and sisters, that... Jesus Christ's words, the words of Jesus and the teachings of Jesus. If you want to go deeper in wisdom, all right, uh, that is it. How many have heard of Bishop Oyedepo? Yeah. You know what? One time, Bishop David Oyedepo came to Ghana and he, he just came out on a one night visit. So I, I decided to go there. And um, once I was with him, I was with him in the car, at the back of his car, and then we went to the hotel after we left the stadium. And um, I asked him, I said, I've heard this word. I've heard you mentioning this word. And I was sitting here, he was sitting on my side. And I said, I, I keep hearing you mention this word, Covenant. Covenant. So, you know, there are people who have teachings on covenant. The covenant of Moses, the covenant of uh, Adam, the covenant of Abraham, the covenant of Noah. I mean, deep covenant. You see? So, I ask him, because I need to know. We have not even left the stadium. I said, the covenant you've been mentioning the Covenant University, the covenant you'll be mentioning. What covenant is it? Is it covenant of Abraham? Covenant? He said, no. It's Matthew 6, 33. <laughs> Seek ye first the kingdom of God <laughs> and his righteousness. He said, he said, I made a covenant with God. He said, I was not a pastor. When I saw that revelation, seek ye first the kingdom of God and all things shall be added unto you. I saw that. That's the greatest. I I had no plan of being no pastor. I made a covenant with God that as far as I'm concerned, I will seek the kingdom of God and a first in my whole life and give everything to the kingdom of God. 
And that's my part. And God will keep his part. And all things will be added unto me. I said, are you serious? Is it much? He said, yes, that's a covenant. And he said, and he told, I mean, well, I heard him preach about that. When he got a beloved, you know, he told her, look, I've made a covenant. I'm under a contract to seek the kingdom of God first. So he wrote on a piece of paper and made her sign. Sign here. Yes, if you are following me, you better sign here that I'm seeking the kingdom. This was, he was not a pastor. Just a Christian. That's the covenant he made with God that I will seek your kingdom. Not not about being a pastor. And that all things will be added unto me. These are the words of Jesus. Very big words. Bigger than any words you can ever think of. If you can focus on Jesus' words, you'll be going deeper into a wisdom that people will not do not even know. Where do you where do you know this from? Know what? No Jesus. No seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. That it can be played out in your life. It can, it is possible if you will do it. Are you ready to do that? How many are already going deeper? Beautiful. Number three. And we are ending very soon. I told you today is quick. Study people. People. Yes. Study human beings. In Matthew eleven twenty nine, Jesus said, Take my yoke upon you and learn of me. Learn of me. When Jesus said, learn of me, it means you can learn of him as a person who existed in the world. Are you with me? Yes. Yes. And if you can learn of Jesus, then you can learn of other people as well. So a human being is something, not what he's even saying, is something to learn of and about. And if you want to go deeper in knowledge, you are going to have to study people. And that is where the word biography, biograph, biology, your biology, your life, Graft out. Written out. Bio is graft. Yes. Bio graft. In 2 Corinthians chapter 3, Paul said, You are our epistle. You are our letter. You are our letter. You, the human being, are our letter. Written in our hearts and known and read by all men. You, the human being, the Corinthians, you are a letter written by God for all men to read. Every man is a letter. Anybody you see coming, walking towards you is a letter. Written to you. He said, written not with ink in 2 Corinthians chapter 2, chapter 3, verse 2 in the New American Standard Bible. It says, known and read by all. Be manifested that you are a letter of Christ. 2 Corinthians chapter 3. You are a letter of Christ. Wow. Not written with ink, but written by the Holy Ghost. Not on tablets of stone, but on tablets of human hearts. So, you, your, God writes on your heart. God writes on tablets of human hearts. Yes. And how does he write? By you seeing somebody who is a letter. 
You see, you cannot separate somebody from his message. I am connected to what I preach. So my life is connected. And my life is also a letter and a message. Everybody's life is a message. And sometimes God brings somebody to you. You sit down with a person. You see the person. And God is showing you, make sure you never become like this man. Make sure you never become like this man. That's a letter right there. Yeah. One day I saw somebody. I was staying in the same place. And the the door, there was a knock on the door. The door opened and the postman came in with a letter. When they opened the letter, the letter was typed in red. Final warning. Final warning for going out of this house. And other warnings about the man paying his mortgage or his bills. One time I met a brother. I was with him. He told me, God has blessed me. I've got these thousands of, uh, at that time it was what currency? Thousands of European money, not pounds. I said, I have the mortgage in England. I, have, I am about so many months behind. So I am so happy I have this new latest contract. So he carried all the money. He was mentioning the amount. Paid, 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 paid. He still couldn't reach the level of what he owed on what he owed. You know, he owed, but he was behind. Yes, arrears. That's what you call it. And then, later, he told me, they've come for the house. So, it's like he rushed to pay his recent money that he had. Oh! Paid it, and then they blacklisted his name, put his name on those who are owing this and that, bankruptcy, whatever, whatever. So, you see, it's a letter to me. It was written in my heart. These mortgages and debts and these type of monthly things that they will say, just pay, 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 pay. It was written in my heart. God made me to fear those things. Oh, yes. Because we are in 92 countries. And we are not just in the countries. You know, as we are in Kenya, we are in Nairobi, in the center of Nairobi. We are in, uh, huh? Yes. Buildings. buildings, buildings and projects. We are in a, in a place called Kabete, a place called uh, Tika, and Mombasa, and Eldoret, and we are at another one at Machakos. You don't know all this. And Nakuru. So many things we are doing in one country. If I just mentioned, I mentioned Zambia. So many. If we were following, owing this, owing here, owing here, owing here. By now, before we realize, we are the next, our next, we'll be tied and pulled in so many different directions. Yes. So, Maybe you see somebody in your life. It can even be your father or your mother. And the Holy Spirit will come to you. Look at it. It says, not written with ink, but written by the Spirit on the tablet of the human heart. And God will write on your heart. Do see this. Never be this. Never. Sometimes you see orangus displaying. And the Holy Spirit, you see, the Holy Spirit will write in your heart this thing, eh? If, no matter what you do, this thing is never be like this. Yes. It's amazing. So the Holy Spirit is writing in your heart by people that you meet. Yes. People that you meet. 
You may meet, you may even see it in your house. Many of you, you don't want your marriage to be like the marriage you saw in the house. One day I asked, I asked many times, so I don't know which day. It must be a day. Even today I've asked. I asked one sister who was getting married. Do you want to become like your mother? She said, no. I don't know her mother. She said, no. I said, why? She said, the way she talks to my father. So I said, well, is he not nice to him? She said, she's not nice to him. You don't want to become like that? Yes. It's a letter that the Holy Spirit is writing to you. Don't be like this. I asked another, can you imagine your mother having sex? I said, oh, never. <laughs> At all. There's nothing like that. <laughs> hey! You don't like my preaching, right? I should change the, I should change the subject. I can change the subject. Let, let's, let's talk about uh, the Holy of Holies. to go deeper in wisdom listen to the Holy Spirit's writing on your heart he writes on your heart he writes things on your heart look, anything that happens in front of you, it's a grace like you see it, oh, I've heard of this but I've not seen one before you know one day I was watching a, a I don't know what, a movie or a documentary they were saying you know when you join the army you are I think it was the American army he said, you, you are lucky if there is a war. Then you get the chance to be like a real soldier. But if there's no war, you just go training, training, training. Who, 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 who? You are sergeant of nothing. You get what I'm saying? You have not been to war before. You don't know anything real. And many soldiers have not seen a war before. They have not seen real action before. So, in the film, the guy said, you, you, you'll be lucky if you have a war. Then you get a chance at real action. Then it's like you are a real fighter. So, what happens is that you are lucky sometimes where you can get a chance to see real orangus and demonic people, you see, manifesting. Then you get a chance to see, wow, this is textbook disloyalty. It's written in the book. They are practicing it fully. But other than that, you read the books and it's just like some statements and words that are made. Then you grow up and you get a chance. It is like being in the army and getting a chance for war. And you say, oh wow, this is how it is. Yes. I think one time some soldiers from Ghana went somewhere to a certain country in (laughs) West Africa. And I think there was some shooting and the general, I don't know, we sent him from here. I don't know where we sent him from. He was terrified. (laughs) Because he had not seen action before. That was his first chance. Yes, you just do a checkpoint. You'll be standing waving your torch. You know, waving your torch. Stop. How far? How far? How far? It's different from fighting wars. Hey! (laughs) Your boys are here. Your boys are here. Madam, how far? That is not a war. It is a privilege when you get a real war to fight. And you realize that all the things that are written in the books, they are real, real, real things. And they are real things to fight and to win to the glory of God. Hallelujah. Sometimes you see somebody brother will come and propose to her and she'll say "Mm." I saw something at the back of his head I realized that the hair already was starting to go so I know that he will be bald so 
I've changed. I, I don't. I don't think so. Or a brother comes to propose to you, and you start to assess his muscles. His muscles. It's like he doesn't have enough musculature. Musculature. Let, listen, I beg you, the Holy Spirit has taken his pen. And you, you look at this person, you wonder where the person ends up. Yes. Watch people who speak and criticize all the time. You are in a church instead of enjoying the church. You are finding something wrong with the church. Instead of enjoying the church then you see how such people end up. Then the Holy Spirit has taken a pen and is writing deep in your... You won't read it in any book, but it will always be in your head. Never be like this person. You know, one day, a lady told me something. I was shocked when she told me. She said, I'm not coming to the church anymore. I said, why? You're breaking our hearts. That you are not coming. She said, no, if I come to the church, I will destroy the church. I know myself. I will destroy the church. The way I am. How I talk. The things I say, I will destroy. It's better that I don't come. Yes. Because she loved me and she loved the church. But she she, she herself knew that her way she talks, she will spoil the church. Yes. Yes. You see, the Holy Spirit is always speaking to you about something. And it's writing in your heart. One day I was, on, I was in England and uh, I was playing golf actually. Then I got the news that a pastor had died. I didn't know him personally, but I knew about him. And, that he, the, and the way he died, he died in a hotel. So anyway... The next day, and the next day, his name kept coming to me. You know, actually, before that he died, his name kept coming to me. I didn't know why. But then when he died, I just decided to find out more and try to study more. And I felt the Holy Spirit writing on the table of my heart. Something to learn from this brother's experience from this brother's experience of how what happened to him and how he ended up that way. See, the Holy Spirit is writing. Have you heard of Jim Baker? Jim Baker? Yeah. Jim Baker, a famous man. He had an assistant. One day I was in Malaysia and this man, he was an elderly man. He was there from America. And my pastor and one of the fathers I have, he, t- he told them, you know, this young man would like to hear the story of Jim Baker and what happened from you because he was, there, he was also sent to prison. He obliged. He sat down with me for two hours at the lunch table. We ate and finished and the food was gone and we were there. And he was just telling me all the things that happened. And the Holy Spirit was writing in my heart. I can't even tell you the things that I learned. Let the Holy Spirit take you deeper in his wisdom. Jesus said, learn of me. Watch and see. You can learn of anybody. Even in your house. You look. One brother was telling me. He said his brother was attacking his father. I told you this story before. And he was in the house and he joined his brother. Chasing the father with a cutlass. Yes. So he came to see me and I told him, look, 
Chasing of fathers and attacking of fathers is Absalom and doesn't end well. Never. It's a curse. Attacking your father who brought you into existence and caused you to exist. Do you see? So I told him, as he was sitting by me, you know, in the first love office, he was sitting by me. I was just talking to him early in the morning. I said, you are in danger. He went back and went to see the father to beg and to forgive him. And his father prayed for him. Yes. The next week, I think two weeks, the brother with whom he attacked his father fell down and died. Suddenly, no explanation. Yes. Uh, and then he came back to tell me, my brother with whom the two of us took cutlass to chase our father who brought us and made us exist. He has just died. Eh? He died suddenly. Yeah. It's a message. And it's a letter written in your heart. That among the sins and wickedness to ever do is to attack a person. You see, a father is not someone who is old. He made you exist. If you are a pastor and I appointed you or a bishop or I consecrated you, no one knew you as that. Through me, you came to exist. It means I'm your father. Yes. So, you need to Receive all the messages that the Holy Spirit is giving you because he's taking you deeper in wisdom by learning of people and also hearing the things that are being written in your heart and being allowed to see a real war. Amen. Number four. Study Books, eat books, eat books. Now, when I say eat books, in Revelations chapter 10, we see a mighty angel arriving, and the Bible says there was a rainbow on his head, and he had a little book open, and he set his foot on the ground. And one leg in the sea. Even from here to the sea. Can you see the hills over there? You can you imagine the angel's foot is here. The foot would be about from this um, mountain here. The foot, the under of the foot will be from here to about the buildings there. And then that will be the foot. That's this part. Then his leg will be way up there. And then the other leg is in the sea. Around Kolebu side. Do you see That's a big angel. And what did he have? Bible says, I heard a voice saying, go and take the little book which is open in the hand of the angel which stands on the sea and on the earth. And I went to the angel and I said to him, give me the little book. And he said, take it and eat it up and it shall make thy belly bitter. Beautiful. But it shall be in thy mouth as sweet as honey. So I took the little book and I ate it up and it was sweet. And as soon as I'd eaten it, my belly was bitter. And he said to me, you must prophesy before many people, nations, tongues, and kings. Now, books must be eaten. What happens when a book is eaten? What happens to the fufu that you've eaten and the rice that you've eaten? Does this look like rice in your body? But you are actually rice. You are walking rice. Rice and pork. Isn't it? Are you not rice and pork and kenke and potatoes and what else? Kelewele. And wache and fried yam. You are, you are walking fried yam. But what has happened because you've eaten it? It has merged into you. Until it is you are the, you, you are the walking yam. You are a walking fufui. 
You are the walking banku. Walking tilapia. You are moving. Tilapia is moving. Where is the tilapia? It has merged with you. So when you move, nobody says, I can see a tilapia here. I can see rice here. I can see banku. No. It has merged with you. So when you eat a book, it merges with you and it becomes you are, it's like the book is now in you. It's you that is moving. The book is moving. So when you speak, people will not even say, oh, you, you learned this from this or you got this from this or whatever. Because it's, it's like it's you now. Because see, when I'm preaching, you don't know where I, I get everything from somewhere. You think I don't listen to preaching? There's very little original of anything, including what I'm preaching. I'm learning. But you see, I eat it. And it joins me. So when, I, when I'm speaking or you see me, you, it's me. You don't even know oh, this is Hagen or this is Derek Prince or this is, unless I mention it, you can't even know. And many of us, we have books, we've read them, but we've not eaten them. That's why I said that unless you read a book nine times, you have not read it. Now, to eat a book, you have to read it more than 21 times. The same book. How many times do you think I have read Rick Joyner's book on the final quest? More than 20 times. It's been about 20 years I've been reading that book. Keep reading. Keep reading. Keep eating. Keep eating until it's part of you. Yes. Sometimes when I'm writing books, you know, I'll be dictating, then I'll mention scriptures. And they never ask me, what, what, how do you know all these scriptures? But I'm sure sometimes they wonder well, how I know all the scriptures. Because I tell them, this verse and that verse and that verse. Yes. Sometimes I'm preaching, don't you, are you not surprised at some of the, yes. Yeah. So, you are blessed. Now become an eater of books. You know, if you are my sheep, eh, my spiritual breasts are bursting. Hey, if you fail to suck my spiritual breasts, you have missed the best milk of your life. You know, when a baby is born, they say exclusive breastfeeding. Exclusive, nothing else. Nothing else. Exclusive breastfeeding. For how many months? Six. Wow. It means, and the milk is water, meat, fish, jollof. Everything is in the milk. Balanced diet. Huh. The baby is wild, pa. Needs nothing else. So my spiritual, you see, God is called El Shaddai. The word Shad, Shadda, Shad is breast. So El Shaddai, you know everything, Israel, El, El, Israel, Israel, El, this, El, that, El, that. El Shaddai, more breast than you need. The mighty breasted one. Shama Katora Balaba Bashan. As you soak in, if I am your spiritual father or mother or whatever, my breasts are bursting with milk for my children. Unless you are not my child. You will be lucky if I call you my son or my daughter. Because it's not language that I use often. Yes. Mighty breasted one. With Continuous, and you, you sometimes you'll be surprised how much milk can come from a breast. What you see the breast and you wonder, this one is producing this, it's flowing like a, a river. Are you listening to me? So, brothers and sisters, remember that. Your father has mighty breasts. The books that I've written to you, if you only take time to read them, slowly, let the Holy Spirit show you. One day a brother called me and said, 
please tell me what I should listen to. I think I told him, go and listen to 1,000 micro churches. Or I think pastors of thousands. Hey, he went for one week to listen to, I think, pastors of thousands or thousand micro churches. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. Just listening. You'll be surprised. Me, I don't listen to Benny Hinn current messages. Old. I listened to Benny Hinn when he was around 19 years old. 20, 20, you see him. When you see him, you can't believe. Is this Benny Hinn? You can't believe it. It, it looks like somebody else. His hair is black. I don't listen to current messages. I listen to old ones. I go to the roots. I see milk falling all over you. Matago barana mashonda la babanda la ba. In Jesus' name. Number five. Experimentation. Experimentation. Proverbs chapter 8 verse 12. I wisdom dwell with prudence and find out the knowledge of witty inventions. Now, I find out I find out, I find out, I discover. Now, some years ago, I was with Dr. Ye- David Yonggi Cho. The last time I played golf with him. Um, one day, one time, the ball was somewhere on the side. And I, had, I, I, was, I was there also, wherever the ball was. I was in that area and he was also there. So it was just the two of us. It was on a little hill. So I asked him a question. I said, what can I do? To avoid certain mistakes in the ministry. But he said, no, you cannot avoid it. He said, you learn by failing. He said, you learn by what? Failing. (laughs) He said, you can't avoid it. You learn by failing. And every failure you have, you learn from it. Yes. That's what he told me. You see... Many things, many times when we are on a mission or you are learning in your life, you see, you are going forward, you try things. Nobody can say he knows everything 100%. Many things we are trying. And as you do the things, some of the things you find out, hey, it's a mistake. But of course, there are some mistakes you can't reverse. But when you are in already, then you have to take it. Hey, Lord, grant me mercies. But many things you learn by failing. Every orangu that I have experienced, I've learned something through them. Yes. I see. One time my brother was leaving the church. He came nicely to talk to me. He said he wants to go and so on. I said, I told him that I feel that I failed because I've not been able to keep you in the fold. Because I'm a shepherd, you know, I don't lose people easily. It takes a lot for me to lose somebody. Yeah. So I said, I told him, I feel like I failed. Because of who you are, you know, I, I, I would have seen it as a great victory that I've been able to shepherd you to a certain level. But due to various things, it wasn't to be. But you learn from every failure. One day I had a certain brother in the church, and then I asked him to do certain things, some things. And later on, you know, when he was offended, I realized that you know, I shouldn't have asked him to do those things. I should have just pretended that I couldn't see what he was doing. I learned to overlook. Even though I know what a person is doing. But so you learn by your failures. And you see the inventions in the world, 
many of them are accidents from accidental things that you learned from. That's why when you go off into the deep end and become very annoyed, you make a mistake because your failure is a failure that almost everybody also has at a point in time, but only that you have overreacted. Because we all learn by our failures. Anybody here who hasn't done something that you realize, oh, I shouldn't have done this, so I should have this has been cool. It's not true. You have made mistakes before. And what Yonggi Cho said is true. He said, that's an invention. Many things are a try, a trial. When I send people on missions, it's a try. It's a try. Because many missionaries, they don't know their left from their right. But you know, I will not sit with a missionary who has not done well and tell him you are a failure. No, I've not done that before. Although some did not do well. I don't, I don't say it to them. Because my, this is, we try the next one. And we try the next one. And we try it until it works. And I've found people doing well as you keep giving them chances after failure after failure. But if a father tells someone you you are a failure, his spirit may be so down, he cannot rise up anymore. So I don't say you are a failure. You get it? Yeah. But look, you're going to make mistakes, but your mistakes may turn out to be your best inventions and your best discoveries. One of the biggest medical breakthroughs came by accident. Sir Alexander Fleming interrupted his experimentation with the influenza virus for a two-week holiday. He went on holiday. And when he returned, he found a mold that had started to grow, a mold on his thing that had, was blocking the thing that was growing. And that was penicillin. That's how he found it. Because he went on holiday. When he came, he said, what is this that has grown here? And that thing that grew stopped the thing from moving. Viagra. It's one of the most popular drugs in the whole world. It is for men taking this medicine to give them power to have sex. Now, It was never developed for sexual whatever. It was a treatment for angina, the heart, heart attack. There's a treatment for angina. Angina is pain in the heart from the blood vessels being tight. So as they were giving this medicine, the men started to report that they are realizing that as a side effect they are experiencing power unto power. (laughs) Yes. And that was Viagra. That was how it was discovered by accident. It was a complete Opposite of what they were. Pfizer. Pfizer. They discovered it. Yes. They forgot about uh, treating the heart whatever. Cry. Said, oh, this one, when you take it, you'll be okay. And it's the most prescribed drug in the world. One of the most prescribed drugs in the whole world. Your next experiment is going to lead to a fantastic breakthrough in your life. Amen. Microwave. As the World War II was drawing to a close, a man called Percy Spencer was attempting to develop energy sources from radar, radar equipment that used to detect planes flying. 
Whilst that didn't work out, he realized that the chocolate in his pocket had melted. And that was how he discovered microwave. And microwave was born. He was doing something for aeroplanes radar. Then he realized that, ah, why is the chocolate in his stomach, in his pocket melting? But perhaps the most interesting one is anesthesia. When in the 1800s, people used to attend what they call laughing parties. You go to the party to laugh. And how do they make you laugh? They give you ether and nitrous oxide. They were abused. It was a drug abuse that was used at parties. To make people laugh and be happy. Now, when the laughter died down, people started to realize that all the pain they were feeling was gone. So they realized that ah, this laughing gas is making them not feel pain. Yeah. <laughs> yes. And then anesthesia was born. <laughs> Yeah. So that was the beginning and realized that we can get a gas and make a person sleep. He, he will not feel pain. Yeah. And you wake up and still not feel pain. So whatever thing you seem to be trying to do that is not working. Eh? Through it, I tell you, the greatness of your life and your ministry is born in the name of Jesus. Maybe you tried a marriage and the marriage has ended up as a beast. You'll be shocked. Or you tried a beloved and the beloved has ended up as a beast. (laughs) That experiment of belovedosis is going to make you a better person. Yes. A nice beloved is born because of your first experiment with beloved doses. How many have had an initial beloved doses experiment that they didn't work well? When you have one experience that doesn't work well, you have one stripe. When you have two such experiences, you are a corporal, two stripes. And when you have three beloved that didn't work, you are a sergeant. And when you have four, you have three stripes and a dot. It means you are a staff sergeant. (laughs) You will begin laughing about all your failures in the name of Jesus Christ. And you will soon be giving testimonies and saying, this problem led to this. This problem led to this. This problem led to this. Yes. Almost every church I've been, Kolegono, why did we go to Kolegono? Because we were chased out of Kolebu Canteen by the authorities. And we were Kolegono, we said we have arrived in the whole world. We are here. I even said that we are going to have from Collegon or the cathedral all the way up to St. Mary's. The whole church will extend the whole road. Hey! Thursday morning came the bulldozers during the PNDC time. Or NDC. Is it NDC or PNDC? Which one? Yeah, I think NDC, yeah. And they came to break the walls of the church. 1998. Yeah. I was so sad. Oh. I wake up, I say, oh, my life's work was Collego. This is when I go to Collego and I say, ah, was this the place I was crying about? (laughs) It was everything to me. But you see, what you are crying about today it will turn into your greatest discovery yes 
What you are crying about today, you see that if you have discovered anesthesia. Yes. You have discovered a very great thing. That's when we discovered the code. The day our walls were broken, that evening, it was Thursday, somebody called me and said, I, I want to show you a place. I said, are you sure? I said, yeah. Come, not industrial area. We drove in that, that very day, in the evening, to uh, the Kodesh. And they showed me the place. And they showed me the owner. I think I went to see the owner that very day. He said, $1.5 million. Our money, we didn't have even $10,000. I said, I've not seen a million dollars before. <laughs> your greatest trouble will be your greatest blessing. In Jesus' name. Amen. Number six, we are ending. The key of observation and traveling. You'll be traveling soon. Now, a man who has not traveled before and a man who has traveled is different. Yeah. You know, one day I saw somebody has been appointed as a, something in charge of tourism. I don't know. I realized that the person has not traveled much. Yes. I don't want to tell you what happened because I was sitting by the person on the plane. Yeah. I realized that. Is this the one in charge of tourism? Hey. Tourism. <laughs> Proverbs chapter 8 verse 1. Does wisdom not cry? And understanding put forth her voice. She standeth in the top of high places. By the way in the places of the path. And she crieth at the gates. At the entry of the city. At the coming in at the doors. And to you, O men, I call. And my voice is to the sons of men. Wisdom cries at the gates. And at the entry of every city. Every city you enter, you will learn something there. Yeah. When I was in Brazil, God gave me one of the greatest revelations. Yes. That have helped our ministry so much. I started having serious meetings at the airport before I came out. Yes. That was one of the greatest revelations. To help the church in many ways. Every time I've arrived, the Bible says wisdom cries at the entry of the city. Even this campus, when you come, at, as soon as you come to the entry, wisdom starts to cry to you and starts to speak to you. Anywhere you go, every town, if you drive into Aburi, wisdom will be speaking. Everywhere. If you arrive in New York, any, 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 any city, Accra, when you arrive at the airport, you, you start to have wisdom. Every airport, you get wisdom. The wisdom may be telling you, not like this, like this, not like this. Yes. Never misuse every opportunity to travel. I can go places with as many as 50 people. Yes. I don't believe in having a bishop who has not traveled to certain places. To be a bishop in our church, you must go ab abroad. You, you can't be a bishop without... You may be in Boku, but you have to be someone who has traveled to England. To We have training in different countries everywhere. You must. Because you'll be a local champion and you may not understand so many things. You can't just be a local champion. And if you are based in England, you must understand Africa. Right now, we are just about starting our missions in Calabar. Calabar is the last town you are in Cameroon and the east. And I've been looking at and Calabar and Enugu and Lokoja. Lokoja is where the British... The, all the, the two rivers, the big rivers in Nigeria, they meet there. Yeah. You know, 
you learn, you have to be able to be everywhere. Because the world is full of people and of souls. You can't be just, oh, I'm a British whatever or an American whatever. You are limited. If the world was made of 100 people, only five would be Americans. You can't limit your life to just what is in America. It's a very narrow perspective. Just as you can't limit your perspective to what is in Boku or what is in Accra. It's too narrow. You must travel. Wisdom cries at the gates and at the entry of every city. That is why sometimes in Africa we look at the leaders and we wonder have they not traveled before? They've all traveled before. Huh? Yes. Many of them have not lived here. Well traveled. Amazing. You'll be traveling soon. Tell your neighbor, you, you have not climbed a plane before, you see. You'll be, you'll be traveling soon. You'll be traveling soon. I say you'll be traveling soon. You'll be traveling soon. You are not restricted to Ghana in Jesus' name. You'll be traveling in Jesus' name. And finally, meditation. 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 Proverbs 24, verse 30. I went by the field of the slothful. And I saw that it was overgrown. Uh, Then I saw and I considered it well. And I looked upon it and received instruction. So you you pass by the field. And it makes you think deeply. Yes. It makes you think deeply. Uh, You must get understanding. Deep thinking. Tell your neighbor, you seem not to think deeply about things. Are you a deep thinker? You just pass by things you don't notice. How many of you watched the Duke of Edinburgh's funeral? Did, you, did, did any, any of you see the Queen's husband? Did you see the funeral? Did, did you see Windsor Castle? I mean, there were no boxes or paper blocks uh, parked at the side. Or a car, broken down car somewhere. Everything is clear. So you see and think. And receive what? Wisdom. Yes. Even the conducting of funerals. You can see and let you get some wisdom. Or the conducting of ceremonies. Yes. Nobody come to say, okay, shall we call? Come, come, come. What, 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 the, what the announcement? This, you know, it, it is, it is, there's nothing like that. <laughs> oh, you've not noticed? Yes. <laughs> Hallelujah. Tell the nearest sister, if you think deeply, you won't mind that boy again. If you think deeply, you will not mind that boy again. You know, one day, a a sister was advising another sister. She was saying that if you are going to marry somebody and the person has even a finger of a child, not even a whole child. (laughs) If the person has a finger of a child, (laughs) not even a whole child, but just a finger of a child, you shouldn't marry the person. (laughs) That was the rule that she was bringing. (laughs) You see, it's because people have seen certain things. Yes. And based on their experiences, they were thinking deeply about it. So if the person has even, no, no, not a finger, sorry, a fingernail. (laughs) So if the person has even a fingernail, (laughs) you shouldn't marry the person. (laughs) What is number one? To go deeper in wisdom and knowledge. Study Jesus' life. Amen. Number two. Study Jesus' teachings. 
Number three. Study people. Are you studying your father in the house? Study him well. Your father is a very wise man, but you don't know. You've always seen him as daddy. You'll be shocked how wise he is. You know, when I met my wife, when we were in school, and I was beloved, those, I used to tell her, your father is a very wise man. Your father is a very wise man. Your father is a very wise man. I found her father to be a very wise man. Yeah. Wow. In your house, study your father, your mother. You'll be shocked how great they are. Some of you always like another person's father. I, I wish my, my father, you see the way? This person's father is very nice with them. They are like this, they are like this, they are like this. You'll be surprised that your father is far better than that father. Number four, do what? Study books. Number five, experimentation. You learn by what? Failing. Are you ready to learn from your failures? You never know how to make granite soup unless you make the first failure granite soup. You learn by failing. How can you make granite soup without failing a number of times? Huh? Yes. You can't stay in the house and say, me, I don't know how to cook that. Me, I don't know how to do what I... Hey, my house, we don't eat okra stew. So, me, I don't, I don't know. That food is a gun food. So, I don't know. I don't know this and that. Hey! Hmm. Tell your neighbor, we learn by failing. Tell me, I don't know how to bake. So, you not bake. And number six, the key of what? Observation and traveling. And number seven, meditation. Thinking what? Deeply. I see you going deeper and deeper in wisdom. Those are the bad days. Are you going deeper in wisdom and knowledge? Wow. Beautiful. What a blessing it is. You are going deeper. And because you go deeper, you are going to do more. Are you glad to be alive to experience certain things and see them practically so that you can enjoy and go deeper by experiencing certain things? What a blessing. Stand to your feet. Now pray that our air conditioner will start working at the center and we'll be moving back and you'll be praying to come back to the sun. Hmm. Honestly, the first, all right, let, we'll talk about that after. Let's pray. Lift your hands. Father, thank you for your power that is at work this day. We give you thanks and we give you praise. Bless us to go deeper, to do more in your kingdom, in our lives, by going deeper in wisdom. Lay hands on your head right now and receive wisdom to be wise, wisdom to be deep in knowledge and understanding. Makara lo shande maralamo sande la balakatabu la basanda. We give you praise and we give you thanks. Draw me deeper, Lord, into your beautiful. Draw me deeper, Lord, deeper into your word of truth. Draw me deeper, Lord, deeper into my love for you. Draw me deeper. Draw me
thank you as you draw us deeper into knowledge and wisdom and understanding. Thank you. We will no longer be shallow. We are going deeper into your wisdom and your grace. From today, open our eyes and our hearts to learn of you, Jesus. To learn of your words. To learn of people that you send. Help us to sense what you are writing on our hearts in a special way. We give you thanks and we give you praise. As every head is bowed and every eye closed, if you want to give your life to God today, I want to pray with you as we close the service today. Maybe you are watching, you want to give your life to God. The Bible says, what shall it profit a man if he gains the whole world and loses his soul? Today, Jesus wants to save you and change your life. If you are here today and you want Jesus to save your life, change you, change everything about you, and you want to be born again, you want to say, Pastor, pray for me and help me today. I need God. I want Jesus to change my life. Pray with me. If you are here like that and you want to give your life to Jesus, you want to be born again, then lift your hand up like this, like how I've lifted my hand lift it like that also god bless you i see all your hand lift it up high at the back there wherever you are and today i'll pray with you and you'll be born again god bless you god bless you god bless you now if you've lifted your hand come to me in the front here come from where you are standing come come on let me pray come from the back come from upstairs come from the back with your hand lifted up if you are watching on television in England, in America, Switzerland in, uh, in Canada, in Ukraine in uh, 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 Russia uh, wherever you are in China lift your hand and say this prayer with me, say Jesus please forgive me for my sins wash me with the blood of Jesus, make me a new person I give my heart to you and I give my life to you have mercy on me cleanse me forgive me wash me make me a new person i'm sorry jesus for all my sins i am very sorry today i am turning around and i'm coming to jesus thank you lord for saving me today please write my name please write my name please write my name in the book of life Thank you, Heavenly Father, for saving me today. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen.